Step aside, the Nigerian Senate tells service chiefs and in Ondo State, the deputy governor battles seven others for the PDP governorship ticket. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezeweke. Thank you for joining us on the program. Now, in a bid to allow a fresh set of persons to tackle the insecurity in the country, the Nigerian Senate has asked Nigerian military chiefs to step aside. The motion was sponsored by Senator Ali Ndume. This is one of the resolutions adopted after the lawmakers deliberated on a motion as regards the rising number of casualties among soldiers and other security agencies. However, the presidency has responded saying the decision was a presidential prerogative and that President Muhammad Bukhari will do what is in the best interest of the country at all times. Joining us to have a conversation, this is a retired Air Vice Marshal Femi Gbadebo. Thank you very much for joining us. We are also joined by Bola Oba, a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, I'll start with you, Mr. Gwadebo. Uh, this is not the first time the lawmakers are calling on the service chiefs to step aside. Uh, they did it in January, and here again, we have the same response, that it is the president's uh, prerogative. What is your thinking on this um, seeming on ending issue of service chiefs? I think the problem here is that the National Assembly <laughs> refuses to understand um, how the service chiefs were called into office. The fact that they serve at the pleasure of the president means that they will leave when he deems it fit. I always tell people that until you get to the top, unless you climb on top of a tree, you cannot see as clearly as the person who's on top of the tree. And so no matter what goes on in the public space, when the service chiefs come in to see Mr. President, there's certain information that they pass on to him that makes him comfortable with what they're doing. I'm not saying he's comfortable with the level of... Uh, you know, the, the, the way people are being killed in the Northeast and the vandalism that we're seeing in the Northwest or even in the Middle Belt. No, he's not. But the truth is that you must figure out what is the best option. Uh, you have an army that is being called upon to do all kinds of things, even police duties, checkpoints, and so on. The uh, army has been overdivided. And the situation in the field is really unclear to most of us. Uh, there are kind, all kinds of interests. Uh, we have seen continuous accusations here and there. But the truth is that there are all kinds of interests. If you notice, every time the polity gets hit, so, hit it up, Boko Haram seems to find renewed uh, vigor, so to speak. To attack, and we can see what's happening in the northwest now that hadn't happened for a long time. Uh, it is at the time when uh, the last elections were coming through that we finally got to know that there's a lot of gold in Zamfara states, there's a lot of mineral resources, and so on that are being illegally mined. Those miners are interested in destabilizing the local communities and keeping them away from the action, so to speak. So there are even people within our system, politics and so on, who are benefiting from all the things that's going on. So there's a lot more to it that meets the eye. But I would have rather the National Assembly um, pass a resolution for their leadership to meet with the president and then ask for certain things, whether changes or whatever it is. Or he could also explain to them why he's keeping the service chiefs on. One, one would but worry. But on them to step down. He's not, he's not, he's not done. He's not done. 
Uh, what would say, um, like I said earlier, it's not the first time they've made this call. Who knows what have, would have been going on uh, behind the uh, corridor. But let, let's go to Mr. Oba and uh, we'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Badaboy, no. in a bit. Why do you think the lawmakers keep making these calls when the response seems to remain the same? Let me start by pointing out some factual corrections that must be made. Senator Aline Dume, who is the chair of the Oversight Committee, the Senate Oversight Committee on the Army, has stated emphatically that he never intended that a resolution be passed for the stepping down of the service chiefs. He said, although he initiated a motion, he went out to pray according to him, and before he could return back to the chamber, Senator Father Unsi from Oshun had initiated another motion on the back of this motion, which ultimately culminated in the resolution that was passed. The spokesperson of the Senate, whilst being interviewed after the resolution, said that the resolution was just uh, a show of the displeasure of the Senate, but that they were not literally asking that the service chiefs step down. However, the presidency also reported or responded by saying that it was the prerogative of the president to hire and fire service chiefs. Contextually within the workings of our constitution, the two institutions are right. It is the prerogative of the Senate, indeed the prerogative of the, any of the two chambers of our bicameral legislature to pass any resolution including that Bola Oba be addressing his, himself as a woman. And I know I will not address myself as a woman. A resolution of any chamber of a legislature is just the mood of the majority of the members of that chamber as at that juncture. And it also is the constitutional responsibility of, of the presidency to define, especially in the backdrop of some of the developments, contemporary developments, to redefine for the legislature the prerogatives of the president. So I'm um, sitting here now thinking the two institutions have made their points. And Senator Ndume has further stated, after clarifying the fact that he never it was not his intention that a resolution to the effect that the service chief step down be made. He said that as the chair of the Senate Committee on Army, he said he was aware, or he is aware. All right, you, you, you've the made that point, sir. Let, let me quickly interject and, and say that even the presidency has come out to say it is the president's uh, prerogative whether um, the service chiefs stay or go. That is something we all know. But what is mute is the fact that this is a reoccurring issue. There are concerns everywhere. We know, for instance, I was, that I was, I was officers... Just up, I, was up to, I was running up to capture that part of, that part of your question. And Senator Nduma emphatically stated that the army, one, is ill-equipped, two, understaffed, understaffed, under-resourced personnel-wise and under-resourced equipment-wise, and that he could not have been calling for the decapitation of the service chiefs, quote-unquote decapitation, but that the presidency and the executive arm of the government was indeed failing the armed services, especially the army, because it was, he also stated 
that seven months after the passage of the Appropriation Act, only 50% of the capital budget of the Army had only been released to them last week, seven months after. So whichever one you want to take, uh, I have started my own uh, point by first stating the facts across yeah. the board. All right. Let's, let's go back to Mr. Badabu. We, we read from uh, the military almost daily their successes in the fight against the insurgents and bandits. We know that there are successes. Yet, we also know that officers are being killed at a worrying rate. This is one of the issues that was raised um, uh, by Senator Ndume. At least 16 dead, um, and the numbers are rising. Is there anything being done that you're aware of to address this matter what should be done otherwise? Because these are pressing issues. There are concerns that doesn't seem to uh, be getting to the president. Uh, I, I think from my time in the military, uh, which is about uh, 13 years ago, I'd say the, what is lacking here is a synergy of efforts. Um, we have a defense headquarters. These operations, both in the Northeast and the Northwest, are supposed to be combined operations. The Air Force is there, the Army is there, and to some extent, the Navy is even in the, in the uh, uh, Lake Chad region. And if that is the case, then there should be a jointness where uh, a joint commander is appointed and they're working together. And so when the Army is moving, Air Force is aware, and then intelligence is coming from even... Uh, the paramilitary agencies. But, and, and even if, when there's to be a report as to, uh, you know, certain achievements, it shouldn't be each service coming to tell the nation what they have done. It should be a joint uh, briefing where they both compared notes and then they're talking at the same time. So there seems to be a bit of a problem in the way they're working together. Uh, that's one thing that really worries me. Uh, I think the other issues has to be with, um, we are living in an age where, you know, social media is there. Before you even mention something, I remember when I was in the service, sometimes we'll have a print crash and for a week, uh, the public is not even aware or is not even sure because we're trying to make sure that the family of the uh, deceased are properly notified. I mean, you know, Nigerians don't know what it means to open Facebook or, or something and just see uh, the corpse of your, your, your loved one who you think is alive and kicking and may do good. Uh, so everybody's just forwarding and passing forward. And I think the defense services are rushing to catch up in the sense of trying to put a proper perspective on the information going on. We've seen also in the past that some of the images that are being bandaged around on social media are either not from Nigeria, based on the uniforms that you're seeing, or they are events that happened in the past. No, we're not and talking about, we're not there. talking, sir, we're not talking about the ones that, you know, are in the past. We're talking about, let's take just the one that happened recently. We know that a number of officers died in, um, you know, a, a shootout with uh, some of these bandits. That is where my concern is. And that is yeah, where a lot see, of persons... But the, the point is this, who is giving out the information about the number of people that are dead and casualties and so on? Casualty figures are things that, you know, security agencies try to keep close to heart. It is demoralizing to the troops. It is demoralizing to the families that are in the background. And so a lot of things are done. But what you get is information that goes around um, that you cannot quite substantiate. That's why I'm saying that the fact that you have bodies uh, that are bandaged sometimes, like you're talking about 16 bodies, when something like this is going on, the authoritative figure is defense headquarters that comes out to give out their casualty figures. It is not proper to rely on figures that are coming from other sources. All right, uh, Mr. Oba. Um, while the deaths are worrying and rather sad, another pressing concern that has come to the fore is the news that over 300 soldiers, uh, Mr. Badabo alluded to a bit of that, people losing morals when they get information on the social media and all of that. Uh, over 300 soldiers are leaving 
citing a loss of interest. What is the implication of this going forward in the fight against all kinds of crimes in this country? I tell people who are close to me when we are analyzing circumstances like this, be it when we periscoping the conducts of, say, the spokespersons of the president, or ministerial appointees, or indeed, as we have on this occasion, the, the fitness of the service chiefs, I tell people that it is pretty difficult to work competently for an incompetent person. You cannot be a competent spokesperson of an incompetent man. You cannot be a competent operative of an incompetent president. Let's be honest with ourselves. You can go into any, uh, you know, changes in tra tra reportorial tra tradition, pre-social uh, media and post-social media. Social media has been around with us now for more than a decade. And wars are literally fought all over the world. And we've seen how those wars are reported. And Nigeria cannot be cannot be taken out of the picture. And let's be very honest with ourselves. If the defense headquarters too had managed information properly before and they had established credibility, people would rather believe them that believe that believe you're a private speaking openly on camera against his, his, his chief. The point is, let's be very honest with ourselves. Senator Ndume mentioned the point that, that struck me big time. He said if there was an ordinary drone that could be used to recce, say, 40 kilometers ahead of the, of the direction that the soldiers were going, the, the, those lives wouldn't have been wasted. What would, it have, what would it have cost to buy a drone? For, but he said, you know what, seven months into the passage, of the appropriation act, only 50% of the capital, the capital uh, budget of the army was just released about a week ago. So I'm sitting there now thinking, I'm not particularly a supporter of the service chiefs. You know, to be honest with you, I think their their over elongated stay in office could be a reason for for one of the factors or one of the reasons for low morale. If, because if you change them, at least new ideas will come on the table. But I'm basically saying that even if you bring new if you bring new persons to replace them, uh, we practically have a president who has retired in office. My conviction, my belief. There, there's no point. I have, I was I campaigned for him in 20, 2014, 2015. I regretted it before 2019, but I am now convinced that his intentions are golden. He could have meant well for this country, but the man has retired practically. I am practically retired in office. So what else do we expect from the army? Mr. Alba, I really would love to continue to uh, hear your line of thought. But let's bring, give uh, some more talk time to Mr. Gwadabo. Uh, I'm told we have less than four minutes. I mean, the, the situation seems really, really blink from where I'm sitting. Um, what do you think that the president can do now to salvage the situation and create um, some sort of reassurance in the officers who are in the front line that their welfare is of paramount importance when it comes to the issue of these service chiefs? Um, I'd like to just come in here and say that, uh, first of all, um, we don't have the number of men in the military to take on the various assignments that we have to put them into now. They're overstretched. And when, you are over, when the military is overstretched, what you will find is that the, the kind of deployments that should happen uh, if, I, if I take you to a UN, UN operation, every six months, the soldiers will get moved back to uh, what you call behind the, uh, you know, the, the war front, where they can at least relax maybe for two weeks. And by the time they are doing nine months, like those of them who even go to foreign countries, they are allowed to come back to Nigeria on a break. 
our troops are working round the clock. Some of them are moved from uh, the northeast to the northwest, while uh, you have some people who just stay in Abuja at the headquarters, and they're, they're, they're constantly at home with their families every evening and all. There are so many things that cause this low morale, and um, we have to reduce the number of areas. Where, if you remember at the beginning, it was like, move the service chiefs to Meiduguri, or like what used to happen in those days, move the IG somewhere. It's like the IG, the service chiefs are supposed to be working in the headquarters in Abuja. They're supposed to be directing and sending things out. So those are the issues. And then um, as far as this, the tenure is concerned, the men, that is the other ranks, they serve for 18 years. And at the end of 18 years, those of them who want can apply to leave. And you can imagine what happened. For officers, officers signed for 35 years. So you see it, 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 it's something different there. All right. Um, the first maybe about uh, up till about the last 15 years, you did see people retiring or wanting to retire to go out in the private sector. People right. felt they came to the military until they retired. Things have changed now. So if you are not, if you are seeing some of the things happening, we first of all have to verify that the numbers are as claimed by individuals. Okay. And the next thing is that what else can, can Nigeria as a country do to find a way to reduce this overstretching of our soldiers? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Weatherball, for your thoughts and your time on the program. We appreciate it. Thank you. And, of course, I go back to Mr. Oba for 30 seconds of concluding thoughts. I started with Mr. Weatherball, so I want to end with you. Let me round up by agreeing with my colleague on this occasion that the numbers are not enough in terms of personnel, equipment or platforms as the military call their equipment uh, are not enough. And I wonder what you expect human beings to do when one, the numbers are not enough and the equipment are lacking. And you know what? We also have the commander in chief who practically is so distant, so distant from his you know, one of the reasons why we campaigned for President Muhammad Buhari against Dr. Gulagos, Jonathan then, was because we believed that his military background was going to help. Well, to something, only... something has to change, definitely. We can't continue to. Yeah, something has to change. Thank you very much, Mr. Alba. I don't see it changing soon. It must. So we, we cannot continue this way. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts. Thank you again, gentlemen, for uh, sharing your time with us. It's appreciated. All right, take a short break. And when we return, who will lead the PDP in the Ondo October governorship elections? That's up for conversation. Stay with us. <laughs>